Hi everyone, I hope you're doing fantastic. In today's video, we're going to be creating a slider that's a home page, you know, the classic home page hero uh, landing page slider type of thing you can find on almost all the websites. Let's get into it. So the goal is to make this obviously interactive. I will be attempting to create a click, you know, an arrow click interaction as well as click and drag interaction. Let's see if we manage to do that. And also two quick reminders. If you're completely new to Figma and would like to learn Figma, you know, starting with the very basics, I have a playlist for that. So check the link in the description. And two, if you'd like to download this source file for this uh, slider, uh, make sure to also check the link in the description or on the screen right now to visit my store. And now let's get into the video. When uh, creating components for uh, websites, it's always great to have one screen that's like a test screen where you can place what you created and um, you know see if, you, if there's anything that needs to be fixed and just test your product, test your designs. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna create a frame and it's gonna be called test frame and it's gonna be 1600 by let's say 3000, 3000, maybe smaller, way smaller. Okay, right. And so we're gonna be creating this component here and then that's gonna be a, a good old Figma component. And here in this frame, we're gonna place an instance of this component and we're gonna see how how it, how it works. To start, we're gonna use the frame tool and create a frame. That's gonna have a gray background and we're gonna name this, uh, this frame slider. And also, we're gonna turn this into a component right away. Uh, and we're gonna place this instance of this component right here. Within this slider, there are gonna be a couple of elements. There's gonna be a status bar that will enable you to see what page you're currently on. So this is just a placeholder for that. Then obviously you're gonna have some areas um, that you can click to navigate back and forth. So we're gonna just use also this rectangle to mark that. So you have our areas for the arrows and our status bar, the counter dots that you can see on on these type of elements. We're gonna make sure that we constrain these to their respective sides. Glue this one to top and bottom, right, top and bottom. So this one is to the right, this one is to the left, and this one is to the center and bottom. Why are we doing this? This is just to make sure the behavior of the frame uh, is correct when scaling it up and down. So we wanna make sure that when we do this, for example, these things stay in the place they are supposed to stay in, right? For example, if we do this, this little thing is not moving, right? Um, whereas if we do this, it is moving, right? So um, now in this tutorial, I'm gonna be using nested components a lot, which means we're gonna be creating, co creating components and then instances of these components are gonna be used in another component. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start with these areas for arrows, right? Let's create an arrow. So let's say this is an arrow now. It's gonna be way smaller. It's gonna be like this, a good old arrow. This arrow is gonna be placed within a frame. So command option G. And again, we're gonna anchor this to the center and center of this frame. Then that way when we do this, it behaves accordingly. Um, we're gonna name this arrow arrows, turn that into a component. We're gonna create a property and the property is gonna be called direction. And then we're gonna select this default uh, variant, right? And we're gonna click this plus icon. We'll name this uh, next and this one previous. And then we're gonna click, you know, uh, press command and rotate this arrow on the left side. So you have two arrows, each one pointing in a different direction. So you have a component called arrows with the property called direction and values previous and next. That's what we, that's our goal. Um, then we're gonna go to assets and select this arrow and place an instance right here. And from here, we're gonna cut the instance and paste that inside the component. 
right and align it to the left here again we're gonna make sure it's as big as the container and we're gonna set the constraints to left and then top and bottom duplicate this change the direction to next align it to the right and set the constraints to right and top and bottom at the same time we're gonna remove these rectangles these were just placeholders for our arrows and now we don't need them anymore and if we take the instance of this slider here's how it behaves so these arrows stay glued to their respective sides and at the same time scale up and down properly so this is the goal behavior of our slider the great thing about this is that for example if i want to make these arrows smaller it's very easy because i can just select the component and do this maybe change them to blue maybe right and you can see that change is reflected across instances here and then the instance of this component so it's updated everywhere this is brilliant this is really makes it really easy to work with uh, stuff when you work with nested components like this that's the reason i do it in this way so this responsiveness is great for for now but we're going to be creating a sub component that's going to be sliding to the left and the right and I, I can't think of a way to make that one responsive as well so we're going to just have to make sure that the dimensions that we use here we're going to use them when creating our components so for now we're going to increase the size to 1600 with this with this component right here and the height to 400. We could easily make the slider responsive, you know, including the, the actual slides, but then we wouldn't be able to get the slide, the actual slide, slide in animation that we are going for. At least um, I'm not aware of, of uh, a workaround under these conditions. So we're just going to have to sacrifice some functionality for a good visual impression, good visual effect. We also have this placeholder right here that we want to replace with an actual component, with an actual element. So we're going to create an ellipse that's going to be like 16 pixels, let's say. It's going to be like black, for example, and there's going to be a bunch of them, let's say three. For now and you're gonna have two of them are gonna be translucent the opacity is gonna be set to 20 this will signal that you are currently on the first page of the slider or on the first of three slides right and we're gonna select these and turn those into a first we're gonna add them to an auto layout name this auto layout navigation for example I don't know and then <laughs> turn this whole thing into a component and this component is gonna have a property called position and we're gonna have three variants we're gonna have position one position two and position three right so one two three and also we're gonna make sure that the change is reflected with these dots right so you have three variants each of them shows that you are currently on a different page it visually needs to correspond to the fact then we're going to go to assets and select an instance of this component and place that inside the slider component constraints set to center and bottom right and then we're going to select it again and align it towards the bottom with some spacing from the bottom edge and then remove the placeholder right maybe maybe 20 right so now if we do this it's behaving identically to the placeholder now at this point, this is a slider that has no slides. So we need to create slides for this slider, right? We're gonna note down these dimensions, that's 1600 by 400, and we're gonna create a frame that's exactly this big, 1600 and 400. That's gonna be our slide, not slider, but slide. This slide is of course gonna be a component. It's gonna have a property called slide number and we're gonna have because we have three slides we are we have prepared for three slides we're gonna have three variants so this is slide two slide number two and slide number three this one is gonna be called slide number one and these slides so that we can easily differentiate them let's just say that this one is gonna be like dark gray this one's gonna be dark uh, blue you know this color and this one's gonna be I don't know dark dark green maybe or this purple 
thing. So we have three slides. Now we're just gonna paste a headline, you know, this is slide one. Avenue next, it's gonna be white. The size is gonna be like 24 and it's gonna be centered against slide, slide one. We're gonna make a copy. This is a description of, of slide one. Lorem ipsum, placeholder copy, copy, text description, font size 16. And we're gonna do this. It's gonna be medium and we're just gonna place that somewhere. Then lastly, we're gonna create a button call to action, right? That's gonna be heavy. It's gonna have some letter spacing, smaller font, auto, and it's gonna be an auto layout. So here is the content of our first slide. Take these and then copy them here and, and here. Right, so we have three type of slides. Then there's gonna be, we're gonna use an instance of this slide and there's gonna be something called a slide container, right? So we're gonna place three instances of the slides next to each other, change the second one to slide number two and the third one to slide number three. And then we're gonna select all of these, press Shift A and name this slides container. We're gonna now select the slides container, cut that and paste it inside the slider and align that to the right, to the left, I'm sorry. And make sure it's at the very bottom of all the elements so that the navigation as well as the arrows are above the slides container. Right, and you can see that we have a first problem. These arrows and this navigation, it's too dark to be visible on this background. So we're gonna select these and change that to white, similar with this. So this black is gonna be now white, and this one as well, right? So here we go. I'm just gonna make these dots a bit smaller. So they're not gonna be 16, but 10. And also the spacing, the spacing is gonna be 10 as well, right? So we're just gonna make this a bit smaller and these arrows may be also a bit smaller, right? So vertical, so the height to 15, I don't know, I don't know. And also decrease the stroke thickness to four, I don't know, right? So this is what we currently have. I'm gonna decrease the size of this um, to fit the width of this, but Essentially, yeah, here we go. This is this is the slider that I think we're gonna have to increase the size of this contents. Yeah, that's better, I think. If you hear a noise, that's because there is currently a thunderstorm. So um, apologies for that. And if you're watching this video, it didn't destroy my computer, so that's that's nice. All right, so we have a slider that contains a slides container, arrows, navigation and we're gonna take this one step further and create two remaining variants where the slider shows essentially these two remaining slides. So, property, new property. So the property is gonna be called also slide number. We're gonna have two more variants. Slide number two, correct. This one's gonna be slide, uh, slide number one. And this one's gonna be called slide number three. Awesome. Now we're gonna take the slides container within the second variant and then center that. It's gonna move that over to the middle slide and this final one, we're gonna align that to the right side. So you can see that we kind of, and you can see that we have these variants, you know, set up properly, but we need to fix the, the headline, right? So this is not slide one. Um, so we're gonna go over here and fix that. This is slide two actually and slide three and also the subheadline is gonna reflect that, right? And also these navigation dots, we're gonna change their positions on each of these slides so that it's reflected properly, right? And now for the prototyping, we need to select this arrow and go to prototype and then click and drag over here to the second slide. It's gonna be on click, change to slide number two and it's gonna be smart animate and it's gonna take 300 milliseconds. Same thing here, totally identical. And then the final one is gonna go back to the first one, right? And also these arrows on the left side, this left one, that's going here, right? 
this left one that's going to the first one, and finally this left one is going here. All right, so we have this nice loop that now when we click on these arrows, it should be, um, we reset the prototype, it should work. So fit with, all right. So there you go, this is a very basic slider. I think we could make one improvement and that would be creating a hover effect on these, these arrows. The basic function of the slider is, is currently present. That's, um, you know, we could call it day, but I think we could, you know, make one slight improvement and that would be the hover effect for this. This means we're gonna be selecting this previous direction arrow and gonna say, previous hover and then this this one that's gonna be next hover right makes sense right and what's the hover effect actually gonna be like what's it gonna look like I think we could use a first of all I'm gonna set a darker background to this component container right this one could be a white radial gradient positioned like this with the opacity set to maybe 20, I don't know. And same with the right one, except that's gonna be on the opposite side, gonna be right here. Maybe the gradient is not gonna go all the way to transparency, but, or maybe it will. Let's test that out. I'm going to select this variant, go to prototype and then click and drag it over here and say while hovering, 80 milliseconds smart animate here and same with this one, while hovering, while hovering. All right, so now you can see that if we hover over these arrows as this gradient appears, but I think it's too subtle, right? I think it could be, um, this could be more visible, I think. Why don't we make it so? Why don't we do this, right? Copy that over here. Like this. Yeah, I think I like this one. I like this. And still, I think still too subtle, too subtle. So let's increase this to 40. One final adjustment, I promise, and that would be that it's not going to full transparency, but just to 10% opacity white. So it has a hover state, and we also mentioned at the beginning of the video that we will be at, we will be attempting to create a basically a click and drag interaction. So let's um, let's try and do that. How should we go about uh, doing this? Um, I think we need to select the slides container and then add an interaction that will be, you have to go all the way here and click and drag over here. On click change to slide number two, except it's not gonna be on click, but on drag. Makes sense, right? Also 300 milliseconds. And then here again, select the slides container and we're gonna say on drag, change to slide number one, but also there's gonna be another interaction because from the middle one, you can click and drag to each side. You could go to the left one and the right one. So on drag, slide, change to slide three. And then finally, the last one, you can click and drag to go back to the middle one, right? You can't go to, you know, continue to the right because that's wall, essentially. You can't do that, but you can go on drag back to the middle one and uh, yeah, this should, this should do it. Why don't we try it out? All right, so this looks promising. Yeah, here you go. So we are on slide one, we can click and go forward. We can go in a loop with these arrows, but we can also click and drag to navigate, navigate between these slides. The navigation is changing. This, these arrows have a hover effect. And okay, so if you'd like to download the file, go check the link in the description. It's currently online in my store. And of course you can then customize all of these, right? So you can change the colors of these backgrounds. You can change the contents of these slides. You can even add your own slides, right? 
That would be a bit more complicated, but it's possible. Certainly, it's fully customizable. This is a good starting point for, um, this is a good template essentially for, for a web slider. So you can place this on your page, on your design and show to your client that um, your, your design vision. So thanks for watching. If you learned something new, please leave a like. If you'd like to see more of these, also please leave a like and comment if there is anything unclear. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.